Hola, Héctor Machola es profesor de la, de la Universidad de Notre Dame. Eh, fue también anteriormente profesor en la Sapienza, en, en Roma, donde estudió. Y eh, es un arquitecto y urbanista que, que ha trabajado muchísimo por, por difundir los valores de la arquitectura y de la ciudad tradicional. Tiene unos proyectos muy interesantes de, recon, de reconversión de zonas urbanas degradadas, que además ha ha difundido de una manera diferente a través de muchos medios de comunicación. Realmente son unos proyectos que han tenido mucha difusión, que han tenido mucha repercusión internacional, ¿no? muy conocidos, y que son los que nos va a mostrar a continuación. Okay. Thank you. First of all, uh, thanks to uh, Alejandro for this amazing, uh, very fast organization of this uh, convention, which is uh, something very, very important, especially because in Europe it's not that easy to have such a kind of uh, discussion and such a kind of uh, a group of people talking about uh, similar things. Uh, these uh, uh, two projects uh, are probably, uh, I, I decided to talk about these things uh, specifically because of uh, the, the subject of this uh, symposium is the, the age of austerity. I'm going to present you two projects I did for the re uh, regeneration of two of uh, probably the more symbolic uh, example of what is necessary to be avoided. Two examples of uh, uh, social housing uh, districts, one in Rome and one in Palermo, which were uh, both uh, the result of uh, the use of the, or the abuse of the ideology on uh, uh, human guinea pigs. Uh, when I decided to study architecture, I was uh, uh, interested in uh, studying architecture. Then when I uh, started my career as a student, I realized that my professor were imposing some way, uh, some very personal way of thinking about modernity. This morning, I think we had a series of fantastic presentation uh, about the meaning of modernity and uh, the strong di differences between uh, modern and modernism, uh, or unity and uniformity. Uh, I think it was extremely useful. So when I uh, uh, started studying, I started also fighting with my professors that were imposing not to watch at whatever kind of uh, precedent I was thinking logical for Rome or for wherever was approaching a, an architectural design. And in parallel with this, I developed my own uh, interest. At the end of my career as a student, I started teaching at the La Sapienza as assistant professor. And in 2001, I was invited from the University of Notre Dame to teach for them. And uh, uh, I started working on my personal research on whatever was to me uh, a gap in my knowledge, whatever was modern but not modernist. I started writing books and essays on uh, uh, the unknown Rome, the unknown architecture, modern architecture, and a lot of unknown architects I was in love with without knowing the name. Then in my research in the archives, I discovered these things. And uh, I, I was a little bit like St. Thomas. It was necessary to put the finger to see if it was true or not, something I heard as a student. And I realized that I was uh, 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 absolutely full, plenty of lies, especially because one of the typical lie you can listen talking about the traditional architecture is that it's expensive. It takes too long. Say, OK, let's say if it is true or not. And uh, in a series of books, and especially in the last one, which is called The Sustainable Cities Possible, I published uh, my research of good 10 years, uh, where I'm talking about all the possible laws. I studied all the possible laws and tools invented after unification of Italy to build Rome that was, we will see, uh, not that big as we can imagine. Naples was 10 times bigger in terms of uh, demography, in terms of dimension than Rome. But nevertheless, in a very, very short time, it was possible to build probably the last great moment of architecture and urbanism in Italy. And uh, in this study, uh, I had a chance to, to, to see the, 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 do the documents with the bottom line cost of construction 
in the bottom line time of construction of many of these buildings, I was completely astonished. So I decided to build, to design as a demonstration, a project for uh, this uh, monstrosity you are going to see soon, which is called Corviale, which is one kilometer long building of nine stories of balatory houses where 6,500 humans are surviving, are not living. And uh, because of my interest of, on many other disciplines that probably, as I wrote in another book that is called Architecture and Town Planning Operating Instruction, uh, before entering in whatever school of architecture, it will be necessary because of my background, as I told you earlier, to make a sort of vaccination against lobotomy. I think it's extremely important for whoever uh, wants to study architecture to at least read about the urban sociology, which is a discipline that is studying the side effect of our job. And this is not uh, nice to be known. You know, there are people, scientists, that are trying to understand which are the mistakes of the architects. It's better to have the knowledge to prevent this kind of uh, mistakes. So, uh, as I said, many uh, uh, of these lies was, for instance, that it was necessary to build a massive buildings to uh, 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 give uh, houses to the new inhabitants, and this was the faster and the cheapest uh, way so let's uh, uh, see if it is true that it's necessary to have uh, such a kind of uh, consumption of land to build uh, cities, or if eventually it was some uh, uh, lie behind that was, of course, made on purpose for the interest of speculation. If we take a, a picture of uh, the city of Rome at the end of Roman Empire, some archaeologists said that it was a city of one million and a half of inhabitants, some other ones said that it was two millions. In any case, what we know is that the city was r roughly contained in the ring of the walls of Aureliano that was 19 kilometers long. Uh, the, the darker part is uh, the, the city of uh, uh, the kings of Rome. Then if we go uh, before unification of Italy and we see the plan of Nolli of 1748, we have a city of uh, 150,000 of inhabitants that were concentrated within the campus marches. If we go to the beginning of the 19th century, the city grew up up to uh, 165,000, but in any case, the city was always there. In 1838, it was again the same. And then after unification of Italy, we have an explosion of the size of the city with the plans that looks very well organized with this typical grid of the Enlightenment. But in reality, this is, uh, urbanistically speaking, probably the worst example uh, that was developed in Rome until that moment. We have uh, pseudo-regular districts which are not taking in consideration the topography, are not taking in consideration the linkage between one district and the next one, which of course are not taking in consideration the possibility of linking with the historical center that on those days was considered the worst kind of urbanism to live by the, uh, um, uh, the writers around the, the, the new king of Italy. The black lines you can see are the proposed demolition in the center. The orange one are the extension. The problem uh, is not only this. This way of developing the city was also at the origin of the financial crack of the Comune di Roma. So thinking about what is happening today uh, and thinking about what this morning Rafael Manzano said, the future is in the past. This is not a nostalgia. This is only because only stupid people can imagine that they can just see in front of them to understand what is going on, what we can do for the future. While eventually, if we watch at the back, we can prevent some mistake. So if we know that a lot of mistakes were done in the recent past, we need to learn from these mistakes to go forward and pre uh, prepare the city for our uh, uh, children and grandchildren. Uh, the reason for this financial crack was that, as it is happening today, everything was demand on uh, privatization. Uh, a, a very smart cardinal, uh, Francesco Saverio de Merode, codified the, uh, the weapon to destroy, basically, the economy and the city and to make the private interest. He purchased all the land around with his friends around the campus marches with the value that was the one of 1600, 
And within 10 years, 15 years, the value of this land grew up to 10,000%. Uh, the, the program was consisting in uh, uh, designing the district. The landlord was designing the district, was proposing these districts to the, uh, the Comune di Roma. Those districts were designed, of course, for the uh, highest profit possible, forgetting completely spatial f spaces for social activities. And uh, the landlord was selling to the uh, uh, Comune di Roma the land necessary to build the roads. The Comune was so happy to buy this land that was also accepting to pay for the construction of the roads, for the construction of the aqueducts, the sewer, uh, electric line, gas line, etc., etc. But because it was not organized for doing that, it was paying in advance to the landlord uh, the cost necessary to build these public spaces of the city. So one person with a one cent in the, uh, his uh, pocket was becoming billionaire soon. And of course, he was investing the money for building the city. So in a very, very short time, roughly less than 10 years, it was the financial crack of the Comune di Roma. At this point, at the beginning of uh, uh, the 20th century, a prime minister, Giovanni Giolitti, said at the beginning of 1870, if there had been a sitting administration that intuited what the future of Rome would be, if had both the areas up to five or six kilometers around the city, and had worked out a plan for growth using highly sophisticated concept, he would have created a city with a far more grandiose lines and would have made an excellent speculation. Speculation not necessarily has uh, some uh, horrible meaning because, of course, no one is spending money without any sense. The problem is that maybe we need to understand the limit of this way of, uh, of thinking. If we take a plan uh, of Rome, of the master plan of 1909, unfortunately, what we have is that a city that was uh, estimated to be a city of one million of inhabitants was at least six times bigger than the city of two millions of inhabitants of the end of the Roman uh, Empire. And this is something a little bit strange because we need to understand the importance uh, of the respect of the land. But unfortunately, on those days, it was already this idea of uh, regular cities and this confusion between uh, building density and uh, uh, living density. Uh, because of this and because of the financial crack, it was necessary at a certain point to build a social housing. And social housing on those days were built by the bankers and the cardinals and the nobles of Rome without thinking about uh, the living condition. And so you have to imagine that uh, it is well documented that between uh, 1905 and 1910, in the quarter testaccio of Rome, it were a uh, condition of life and uh, revolutions worse than the one of the banlieue uh, uh, in France uh, of uh, five years ago, but also the one in, in Stockholm of a few days ago. Uh, at that point, it was necessary to, uh, to buy pieces of land far away from the center. But thanks to the, uh, the great mind of Gustavo Giovannoni, a great thinker that was talking about many things new urbanism are talking about today, like the idea of the 10-minute walk. He was not talking about 10-minute walk, but because of the analysis of historical cities all over in Italy and in Europe, he understood that the, the, no, the natural uh, organic development of city was never concentric, was always uh, up to some level, some dimension that was r roughly between 800, and, uh, um, 800 meters and one kilometers in diameter. That is exactly the 10 minute walk. And those were uh, uh, self-sufficient districts. So, he built all these uh, uh, circles you can see are all the intervention of Istituto per le Case Popolari, Social Housing Institute of Rome, which are, uh, 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 th which generated the last example of good urbanism in Rome. Uh, the biggest uh, one we have is in this lower part is Garbatella, in the northern part is uh, Città Giardino Niene, which were so successful that unfortunately attracted the development of Rome and now are suffocated and eventually are also completely transformed because of the value of this district. Uh, they understood the value and they decided to demolish uh, many of the beautiful houses and spaces that were, generating, uh, were characterizing this place. And now you will see in some uh, minute are no longer what they were. Then if we go to the master plan of 1931, we have something that is terrible 
a city that was estimated to be a city of two million of inhabitants uh, was more than 10 times bigger of the city of two million of inhabitants at the end of the Roman Empire. This is also because uh, 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 it is already well known, the idea of the radios and uh, the ideas that are uh, 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 proposed abroad. It is uh, uh, the year during which it was the exhibition that made a brainwash of the Duce. We suppose that the fascist uh, uh, regime was uh, pushing for a traditional classical architecture. In reality, the only imposition made after the exhibition of 1931 was exactly to forbid traditional architecture in Rome. And uh, starting from 1938, forbid also traditional urbanism in Rome. But already this Massapan was taking definitely the idea of uh, the so-called functional city. And indeed, in 1942, so the same year of the publication of the Athens Charter, published by uh, Le Corbusier alone, and not with all the friends that took part to the uh, CIM of uh, the 1933, uh, Italy was uh, one of the first countries that uh, uh, made some specific law that is taking care about urbanism and architecture, which is still valid today. So everything of fascism was condemned, but what was making the interest of speculation. Uh, now, try to imagine that together with the problem of the city that is growing with a lot of inhabitants that are moving to Rome, there is the problem of people that were evicted from the center of Rome. So these are the demolition in the center of Rome, nearby Piazza uh, uh, Navona. These are the one nearby the Four Imperiali and uh, uh, the Lungo Tevere. This uh, is uh, the same picture, the same place. Uh, this is an idea of uh, the giant district uh, that was demolished nearby the Fori Romani, the district Alessandrino. So try to imagine the difficulty of providing houses for these people evicted uh, by the fascist regime and the short time necessary to provide the houses. These are the demolition nearby uh, the Porto di Ripetta and the Mausoleo di Augusto. And these are the demolition nearby St. Peter that were done after the Second World War, was fi were finished in 1950. And again, whatever uh, fascist was uh, condemned by the urbanism and architecture. Uh, this uh, was the first part of the Garbatella that unfortunately was demolished in the 50s to justify the construction of new large boxes without any specific character. What is the result of this way of making urbanism? Is there some incredible consumption of land? Now, uh, we are approaching the, the methodology I use for this project. If we take these two pictures from the same height with the satellite, you have the historical center of Rome as some incredible building density, which is supported with some incredible uh, uh, dense presence of uh, piazze and piazzette, all connected with the urban sequences. Places that are inviting people to walk, are inviting people to use their legs instead of using cars. The places that are giving a chance for having social activities, which are not present in the, se in the, the suburbia. This, uh, in the lower part, is one of the best examples of uh, modern intervention in, uh, uh, in Rome. But we have uh, these warm-like buildings which are uh, characterized by a lot of empty spaces in the center, which are places for parking cars, even if they are not parking. Of course, are not the right places where you can walk. Eventually, it's the place where you can some, find some maniac that is trying to, to abuse of uh, uh, women. So now, uh, and unfortunately, I'm not kidding, because this is something that is happening uh, last year. It was uh, arrested one person that abused about, um, I don't know, many tens of uh, uh, women. Uh, it is necessary at this point to think about uh, something which was extremely clear in the mind of the mayors of Rome because of the financial crack and because of that speech I told you about uh, uh, the, the financial crack of Rome made by the, the prime minister. In 1907, 1909, the mayor of Rome, Nathan, uh, understood that it was necessary to participate to the construction and is exactly what is happening today eventually. Uh, his, uh, Italo Insolera, a great uh, uh, um, urban historian, said in a city where the only industry is building, the administration deficit can be eliminated through a direct participation in that area of investment. Think about what is happening today. Because everything is demanded on private investors and bankers, we have the world that has a financial crack. But maybe if we rediscover tools, laws that allow 
the Instituto Case Popolare to build on uh, uh, its own, the houses to be managed, instead of just managing houses built by private investors, probably we can save a lot of money. We are not improving only the life of people that are living in social housing. Of course, we have to consider the importance to forbid, as it was before fascist regime, to have a district where only the working class lives. We have to promote the integration of those people. This means that it's possible to build houses not only for the working class, but also houses to be uh, uh, for sale in order to balance and zero eventually the cost of construction of social housing. And because we have a private investor that are building for public institution, there is no quality. They are taking the money and run. While if the institution is building houses, they will build in the best way to prevent the cost of maintenance. By the way, this problem of cost of land was something that was denounced also in the meeting of uh, the Istituti Case Popolari uh, all over in the world in uh, this meeting that held in uh, London in 1909. They recognized the most important problem is not the cost of construction of, bu of building, but is the cost of land. This means that it's necessary to provide as much as possible some public domain in order to build uh, houses without the cost of, of uh, 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 purchasing land. Now, what we have today, because of uh, the functional city imposed with the, the Athens Charter of 1933, we have uh, cities that are much bigger than what they really need to be. Our city that are uh, planned according to the Viradieus that was imposing, as uh, Le Corbusier said, I have to live 30 miles far from the place where I'm working. My secretary has to live also 30 kilo f miles far from the place where she's working. Both of us need to drive cars, consume uh, uh, tires, uh, gears, etc., etc., because this is good for economy. It's exactly the opposite. And this morning, Leon Cria was talking about uh, uh, J uh, James Oliver Kunstler, uh, uh, the long emergency, where it is clear that uh, uh, oil is ending. So starting now, thinking about what we can do to prevent this cost. Maybe it is wise, instead of uh, beating our head against the wall when the problem is going to happen. Now, uh, to understand this project, I think it's necessary to understand the cost of construction, because sometimes architects think about uh, the beautiful drawings, uh, and sometimes they forget uh, urban sociology, they forget uh, economy, they forget uh, things that are demanded to other disciplines. But according to Vitruvius, our job is something that needs to involve the knowledge of other disciplines just to prevent the problems. So now, if we take in consideration, thinking about also the lies of uh, the, the low cost of construction of uh, the monstrosity proposed, especially in the 60s and 70s, I think it's necessary to make a reference and uh, make a, a, a confront. Today, according to the uh, Association of the Architects, the construction of luxury dwellings in Italy costs 377 euros per cubic meters, and common dwellings, 213. Now, just to have an idea of the first lie, the Corviale, which is this monster you can see in the picture, took 7.5 years to have the first 122 apartments available to be used, and it, the cost at the end was uh, roughly the one of common dwellings of nowadays. In addition to this, it's necessary to remember that uh, from 1982, when the building was finished, to nowadays, were spent reevaluating the money uh, roughly four, uh, 46 million of euro of cost of maintenance for maintenance that were never uh, that never solved the problems of uh, the, the quality of life. Now, uh, if we take this uh, a cost, I told you. Uh, we uh, can say that the present cost of common dwelling is 639 per square meters, or luxury dwelling is 1,138. Uh, we have to consider that today, uh, this morning we were talking about the abuse of words. Uh, one of the more abused words today is sustainability. Apparently, uh, there is a great misunderstanding about sustainability. In any case, if we consider the so-called bioarchitecture or green architecture or lead, whatever words we want to use, uh, the uh, recent estimation says that this uh, costs uh, roughly 10-15% more than the common dwellings cost I told you earlier. This means that common dwelling is six, 734 euros per square meters, while luxury dwelling is 1,308. Now, uh, this is the cover sheet of the book uh, I told you I wrote. Uh, 
I analyzed typologically all the houses of these districts built in, these, uh, 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 in Rome after uh, unification, especially uh, uh, between 1910 and 1926. So uh, until a certain point, uh, the fascist was uh, uh, not uh, fighting against the good things. In any case, uh, classifying these houses in the relationship with the typology, uh, the uh, intensive building costed much less than the cost I've shown you. Uh, the uh, uh, semi-intensive buildings, uh, again, uh, from 380 uh, to 456. The uh, Villini, uh, individual uh, uh, houses for up to four families uh, from uh, 466 to 572, but the, here the costs were increased because of the condition of the underground with a lot of cavity. In any case, it's less than what we have seen. The Palazzine, a typology invented on those days from 378 to 478. The Villini with a vertical, uh, uh, horizontal subdivision, again, uh, from 381 to 538, again, with a problem of foundation. But what is happening is happening that today those houses that were built as a social housing are on the real estate market of Rome uh, at the same values of the historical center. So if we compare the cost of construction of those houses with the, the, common co the present cost of construction of luxury dwellings, those houses costed up to 66% less than the present cost of construction. Those houses were built in a period of time that goes from six months to one year only, and never restored in 100 years, while modern buildings are need, uh, need uh, restoration after five years, 10 years. If we compare the cost of those houses since are built with the traditional masonry and are performing very well in terms of thermoagronomy, we can say that these houses costed up to 71% less than these costs. So now let's see what is going to happen if we accept the proposal of the inhabitants of Corviale in Rome that asked to demolish the monster. Uh, and again, it is necessary to think about uh, the mistakes because uh, many times we are emulating uh, models that were abandoned somewhere else. And uh, for instance, the 15th of July of 1972, it was demolished the Protego that was considered unlivable environment harmful for its low income residents. And uh, the uh, American historian Charles Jenks said that that was the, the end, the death of those utopia. Because we are smart, five days later, we uh, conceived the Corviale in Rome when it was abandoned. So uh, the problems with this project of urban regeneration is also the needs of respect of lo local inhabitants. Because uh, bad or good uh, uh, the life is, in any case, they uh, made uh, uh, social activities in these years they develop their relationship with the neighborhood. And we can't imagine that uh, we can proceed like Mussolini by evicting people and move 20 kilometers far from the places where they are living. So if we take the plan of Corviale today, what we can see is that the land around the Corviale is uh, characterized by a lot of voids. And those voids are belonging to the state. That means that instead of purchasing new land for building the new houses, possible to build there. Then we have some specific topography. We have this uh, hill that is beautiful and needs to be respected as much as we can. And uh, we have a possibility to fill these spaces, uh, saving the aqueducts, the sewers, etc., etc. So we can fill the empty spaces. When these houses are ready, we can uh, move the inhabitants and demolish the first uh, uh, blocks. When these are ready, we can build the blocks. And then, step by step, we can generate a new district. Uh, it's something that is not uh, uh, causing any uh, uh, trauma to the inhabitants. And at the end, it is generating something that could be uh, livable. Uh, what we have is that uh, it is not just a building, uh, a construction of building, punctual building without uh, the idea of the city, but there is first the idea of the city. 
the needs of providing spaces for social activities, the needs of providing some autonomy of the district, also because we have to consider that the congestion of the historical center is also because people that are living in the suburbia are migrating toward the historical center, looking for the, the spaces that are denied on their districts. So there is, a, a, on the crest of the hill, one uh, uh, main street with a sequence of five piazza and piazzetta with many activities. Uh, and uh, these are possible pedestrian uh, network, but in addition to this network for pedestrian, there are these uh, uh, courtyards which are uh, open during the day that are creating shortcuts for the pedestrian, where many other activities uh, can find place. The circulation of cars, of course, is fundamentally important. In Orange, is the main circulation of cars around the district. In Brown, is uh, the local traffic. All the buildings are served with the uh, Uh, with uh, uh, these uh, spaces. Sorry, I have some problem. Uh, of course, it's necessary to think, uh, take care about the parking system. Uh, so in Orange, you can see the underground parking system. You have to dig f the land for the foundation. You can have the parking lot under the buildings. In Brown, you have the public uh, bil uh, parking lots along the streets. But then we can add uh, additional functions. Uh, in Orange, you can see along the main street, the shop. Instead of planning the shopping mall, the uh, Centro Commercial, uh, uh, far away from wherever, we can have the, the natural uh, uh, commercial center district along the street. In Brown, there are the workshop for the, the working class that is living there and is waiting since uh, at least 20 years to have uh, the workshops under their houses. This is something that is uh, uh, bringing some additional value, we will see. These are uh, all the possible greens. We can have a large park for the city, not only for Corviale, but also for the neighborhood of Portuense that is uh, adjacent to that. We can have uh, these uh, light green into the courtyard where you can have uh, spaces where you can have a playground for children, spaces for uh, elder uh, people for their uh, time. Uh, there is a countryside, of course, and this uh, dark green is something that is private green uh, uh, spaces uh, as a backyard of many buildings that in some way is also emulating the fortified city, creating some definition of the edge of the intervention. But as uh, uh, this morning uh, Leon Crier was uh, showing, uh, we need to have a city where many different things are happening. A city made only of vernacular building is not a city. A city made only of monumental building is not a city. We need to have uh, an equal uh, distribution of uh, a special building. So there is a bank and post office, uh, a market lodge, a church, an elementary and uh, uh, maternal school with uh, uh, sport activities that are open at the end of uh, class time for the kids of the district. There is the town hall with the, the police station, some uh, library, some uh, uh, um, high school, uh, again, with uh, these uh, sport activities for uh, the, the, the kids of the place, the middle school, and at the end, some uh, movie theater. And then we have, of course, the uh, uh, res economica or privata, which are the buildings. The marriage between the two makes the, the civitas, and this is what could be the next uh, Corviale. Uh, at that point, I also made a calculation just to understand how much does it cost. So for doing that, I made an estimation of the cubic meters of uh, the public building, which is 162,000 uh, cubic meters of public building, and 893,000 uh, cubic meters of uh, uh, buildings. Uh, if we consider an average of uh, four inhabitants every 100 square meter according to Italian standard, we can say that in the new district of Corviale, we can have 8,530 inhabitants instead of the 6,500 we have nowadays. That means that we can have that integration, but also we can sell uh, the houses and we can uh, save money. But it is interesting that this kind of intervention shows also that the present Corviale uh, uh, it is occupying, is uh, 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 consuming uh, almost 30 hectares of land, while the new one is giving back to the land almost uh, 12 hectares. Uh, the district uh, uh, I was inspired were these uh, that, believe it or not, are social housing districts. So you can see uh, this beautiful courtyard with these uh, uh, green spaces inside with the playgrounds for children many different kinds. 
you can see children still playing after 100 years, those are perfectly working. They were considered not functional by Le Corbusier friends, but still today are showing that are perfectly functional. And these are a series of uh, uh, views of uh, 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 the possible future Corviale that is inspired from typical architecture of Rome. Also because this kind of project is thinking about uh, one of the tools of the Istituto Case Popolari that was involving uh, uh, local uh, uh, small craftsmen, eventually little cooperative of workers uh, uh, managed by the Istituto Case Popolari that was creating some possibility of uh, 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 com uh, widespread wealth among the inhabitants. It was generating places of job instead of unemployees like nowadays. So uh, working with the, for the craftsmen instead of working for the industry means also to improve the economy. So this is a view from uh, the town hall toward the elementary school. You can see these green spaces within this, um, the blocks with the playgrounds for children. Uh, this is a piazza, the same piazza from the opposite view from the school toward the uh, town hall. Uh, this is a view that's shown this block again with uh, some uh, uh, playground for children. This is a view that shows uh, the piazzetta with uh, the market lodge and the piazza for the church, again with another one of these uh, courtyard with uh, the playground for the children. This is a view at the ground level of uh, the market loggia sequence. This is uh, the, the piazza at the back, uh, so you can see the market loggia and the church here. This is a view of uh, this uh, block at the corner of uh, the district uh, with this uh, uh, wall that is separating the private garden from uh, the public park. This is a view that is uh, uh, watching toward the movie theater. But now, what is interesting, eventually boring, is that I made a calculation to understand the costs. The demolition of the present Corviale uh, uh, needs uh, roughly seven uh, millions of euro. Uh, the construction, I'm not taking the cost of construction for, to be honest, I'm not using the cost of construction of uh, common dwellings, but the, the one for luxury dwellings. And for these buildings, we need to have an, a, a cost of uh, 398 millions of uh, euro. That means that is an investment of 405 millions of euro. This is uh, something that is scaring until we understand that uh, if, for instance, instead of giving the license to build a shopping mall somewhere, we sell the, uh, the, the commercial spaces we are designing, with some costs which are lower than the one of the present real estate market, we can immediately recover 175 and a half millions of euro. Then, if we sell the uh, uh, houses which are exceeding the one we need for the inhabitants of Corviale, even for a cost that is lower than the one of luxury building or nowadays, we recover other 253 millions of euros. That means that we have a profit of 429 millions of euro. This means that uh, instead of having cost, we have a positive uh, 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 budget. But then we have to consider that the houses were promised to the inhabitants of Corviale, and there are tools that used to be part of the Italian laws uh, in 1919 that were giving a chance to have a sort of uh, 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 system of a special mortgage or uh, public loan that it was giving a chance to have a house paying step by step the property and uh, uh, considering these uh, costs that is less than half of uh, the present cost of, of uh, real estate we can sell, uh, sell the uh, extra house the, the houses for the inhabitants of Corviale wants to purchase their houses for 3,000 euro per square meter. That means that it's possible to recover other 487 millions of euro. That means that the cost of this intervention at the end put in the, the pocket of uh, the public administration half of a billion of euro to be invested for the improvement of another district. Now, uh, after this uh, pub, uh, project I did as a demonstration, I was invited by uh, 200 inhabitants of Palermo to make a proposal for their uh, district Cor uh, Zen that is one of the worst example we can see and is something that is uh, 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 necessary to, uh, to be approached in a specific way because among the, the lies 
uh, there are also uh, there is also some incredible level of hypocrisy. So if you listen what uh, uh, there are subtitle, what uh, the architect said about this project is something that is uh, eventually make you sick if it works. Lei è un grandissimo architetto. Le posso you chiedere una cosa? Come ha fatto a progettare? Basically, the journalist was asking if the building was uh, uh, how it was possible to conceive that building. He said that it's perfect, it's marvelous. There is, a, uh, for him, it's beautiful and perfect. And so the architect said, "Are you sure about what?" Uh, the, the journalist said, "Are you sure about what are you talking about?" And he said, "Yes, it's impossible to do it better than what it is." And he said that the only reason why it doesn't work is because of mafia and because of Italy, not because of his ideologies. Now, when he, he planned this project, he said that the Zayn aims uh, at realizing the project of modernity which tends to create through architecture, a more just society where ideals of fraternity, equality, and freedom found place. The ultimate purpose was to materialize the idea that the historic city, an expression of those social classes that had dominated and oppressed human society, was to be abandoned to its founders, while the emer for the emerging popular classes were to be destined new neighborhood and suburbs that by joining one each other would generate the new Jerusalem, the city of classless society, free, just, and fraternal. So at that point, the journalist asked Gregotti, can you read it? hanno in testa una cosa che a loro gli sembra bella, poi realizzano una cosa e là dentro ci deve vivere però migliaia di persone che vivranno per tutta la loro vita in un posto Well, the question was, if you like so much, why don't you live? Could you go and live there? And the answer was, what are you talking about? I'm doing the architect. I do another job. I'm not doing the proletariat. This was uh, the incredible hypocrisy of these. Uh, this is what is uh, the Zen today. It is uh, some gigantic jail, some gigantic ghetto, inspired from uh, Sing Sing, the prison. And it's one of the worst districts in, uh, in Italy where you can drive cars and your tires are disappearing and you don't understand where they are. These are uh, images, you can see the skeleton of this motorbike. This is the typical uh, space. It seems like you are in Baghdad, but you are in uh, Palermo, in Italy. Uh, the buildings are very recent, but uh, you can see the skin disease of the walls. Uh, how much they can live, a few years, not more. This is a, a church that looks like a design by the architect of Saddam Hussein for a bunker. <laughs> this is a school, this is another school. Uh, I'm going faster. Uh, the inhabitants built illegally on their own a little uh, uh, kiosk for shrines. Uh, uh, as a rebelling uh, against the idea of having something super like by, made by the architects. But uh, some historians said that that was uh, showing the success of uh, this lysist uh, conception of the project because people recognize themselves in their insula. Now, watching uh, the, the urban de uh, development of Palermo is something extremely whining. It's a typical Islamic town that was uh, cut off within uh, uh, four district in uh, uh, 1601 with the opening of the Makeda. This is the present condition. You can see the, the traces of these winding streets still there. Uh, I think it is necessary to understand also the local lexicon. When we approach a project, we need to understand the local language. We need to read the genetic code. So in the genetic code, there are the balconies, for instance, many different kinds of beautiful balconies. Of course, is very Hispanic also in many of the solution. There are many courtyards open to the public passages, uh, beautiful courtyards. Uh, and there are a lot of markets. There are street markets, uh, like uh, the souks, uh, still alive. 
And we have also to analyze ex example of good and bad social housing district. This is the, the Quartiere Matteotti, very beautiful. This is the Quart Villaggio Ruffini, something very humble, but still at a human scale, with the shops, a portici, church. Then we have uh, some ideological intervention made by a very famous architect, Giuseppe Samonà, who was also owner of a firm that was producing bricks. So he decided to use bricks in a city without the bricks. And he built one model of house repeated all around, forgetting the balconies that were part of the genetic code. So the inhabitants built illegally their balcony, also putting some kind of baroque rail. They built illegally gardens to have some place to live. Now, if we analyze the site, this is uh, what used to be the, the site of the Zen before the construction of uh, the district with these typical presence of hamlet and uh, villas and rivers. And this is what used to be uh, the topography and uh, the roads before the intervention with the system of uh, uh, road before and after the Zen. Uh, it is an impermeable uh, place. Uh, it seems like it's a ghetto. It, you, you just need the electric line to burn people that try to leave the Zen, and then it's done. And this is exactly the same methodology I used for Corviale. There are a lot of empty spaces. It is possible step by step to fill the empty spaces, move people, demolish, and proceed step by step. having at the end some district. This is what is today, this is what could be with the opening of new roads that are linking to the neighborhood nearby, uh, creating. This is the circulation today with the no connection, and this is the future circulation that uh, gives a chance to have a connection with the the, the neighborhood uh, nearby, the, uh, uh, the beach, the uh, uh, airport, uh, and the center, of course, of the city. This is the main circulation, vehicular circulation. This is uh, the permeable uh, uh, district with a vehicular and pedestrian circulation. These are the public transportation that are linking with all the neighborhood nearby and the uh, beach, of course. These are the parking lots under the ground, ground level. I'm running a little bit. These are all the uh, pedestrian circulation in the piazza. This is with the addition of the internal courtyards. Uh, and this is the 10 minute walk. It's exactly a diameter of 833 meters. This uh, uh, is the distance in time of uh, the main decumano, 7.47 minutes. This is the circulation of uh, the main cardo, 13 mit uh, uh, minutes. This is the circulation of uh, the street market cardo at their 13 minutes. You have to consider a lot of uh, uh, farmers that are living there. These are the distances among the different piazza. Roughly every two minutes there is a piazza or piazzetta. This is the size of, Corvia of Zen today, it's 97 hectares. So I made some uh, uh, evaluation to understand if we are respecting the present standard, because that is another problem we have nowadays. We are respecting uh, uh, the green spaces pro uh, proposed are uh, 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 54 hectares instead of being uh, 19, as it is uh, uh, considered. Also for the parking lots, those standards are respected. In uh, yellow here, you can see the spaces for a, a playground for children. In brown, you can see the spaces for elder people. Uh, these are the schools. This is uh, the sport area with the two large sport complexes that were requested by the inhabitants because of, uh, they understood that the presence of sport is moving kids from a mafia uh, environment. And uh, so these two these, uh, uh, sport complexes are linked by the park where you can have a jogging and a bicycle path. These are the, mm, the different activities of the Southern Sporting Center. This is the Northern one. These are the commercial spaces and uh, uh, the workshop workshops. This is the street market. These are the green spaces. These are all the public buildings and special building institutional buildings. These are the houses. This is the Chivitas. 
So the mega blocks, and then I make a calculation. The cubic meter of the present Zen is roughly uh, two million two hundred uh, uh, three hundred uh, uh, cubic meters. Uh, the, the new uh, district of Zen is almost three millions of a cubic meter. This is necessary to understand the cost of construction, but also the number of inhabitants. This is uh, some study of the different sides of the streets of uh, the district. So the demolition of the present Zen cost 404 uh, millions of euros. Uh, the construction cost of Palermo are lower, cheaper than the one of Rome, it's 225. So the construction of the new Zen is 647. Also in this case, we can uh, consider things that are not necessary to be built uh, by private uh, public investors, so we can recover money by, uh, from the sale of those uh, spaces for the sport complex and uh, the clinic. And uh, uh, of course, we can go step by step to the profit, these are the surfaces for, uh, for commerce and uh, workshops that can give other 152 millions of euros. Then it is possible to evaluate that we have uh, 5,100 uh, 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 inhabitants more than what uh, are today in uh, the Zen. That means 21,125 inhabitants that gives a chance to sell other uh, houses and recover other 358 millions of euro with a very ridiculous cost if considered uh, with the present one. And step by step, again, we can have these uh, uh, profit that are um, uh, uh, giving uh, uh, positive uh, uh, accounts at the end of uh, the intervention. It is also uh, possible to sell the, the, the garage, a, public gar a private garage, recovering other money. So at the end, we have a profit of 175 millions of euros. But it's interesting also the fact that we can consider the profit uh, year by year with uh, the rent of uh, the houses uh, with a cost of 300 euro per uh, 100 square meter, which is more, uh, much less than what is the present cost. That gives uh, other eight million and six hundred forty uh, mil uh, uh, euros, uh, thousand euros for the, uh, by the state, and the state can use this money to pay eventually the interest to the bank, as it was happening in uh, uh, the beginning of the 20th century, to give a chance to the very poor person of working class to become proprietor of the houses, as used to be. Uh, today, we have uh, some investment of the Regione La uh, uh, Sicilia that uh, uh, has 47 millions of euro to be invested. So instead of wasting this money for useless intervention, it is possible to provide 696 apartments of my project and give uh, uh, houses to 2,785 inhabitants. This is uh, what is today, the Zen, as you can see, this is what could be the same space with the, the new church instead of the bunker we have seen earlier. Uh, typical of Palermo is the presence of giant uh, magnolia trees uh, uh, in the space. You have to imagine the, the, the heat in summer. Uh, this is a view at the street level of the market uh, piazza, and this is uh, one aerial view of the same piazza with all these uh, umbrellas of uh, the market typical of uh, uh, Palermo. Thanks.